Folks, with the 82nd overall pick, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selected incredibly athletic edge defender Yaya Diaby out of Louisville. Now, this dude, again, has freakish, freakish athleticism. He ran a 4.51. 40-yard dash, as we talked about in the video, when he was brought onto the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the dude was one of the most athletic edge defenders already left in the draft of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selection, but just in the draft, period. Point blank, simple as that. He was projected to be a round three, round four guy, still needs to polish up on some of his things, but the athleticism is certainly there. That begs the question, what type of impact and what type of fit can Yaya Diaby have in this Buccaneers defense? Joining me is Evan Wanish from BucksNation.com and sometimes the Cannon Fire podcast. And... It's a really interesting question to ask because Yaya Diaby here, six foot three, two hundred and sixty-three pounds. He's a guy, Evan. I think you look at and you can put him in so many different types of situations. I think he's got the size, obviously, to be an edge defender. I think that he can play a little bit of a defensive end type of role. That's kind of what he was labeled in the pre-draft process and coming out into the upcoming draft as well. What are your thoughts on that first off? Yeah, he. Again, you know, we talked about with the Cody Mock video, versatility, right? And I think this is another guy who, while he's, he can't play all over the line, I think he can do a couple of different things for you. You know, I think he can be a stand-up linebacker, but I also think he can you can put his hand in the dirt, and I think he can rush the passer from there as well. I'm not saying it would be in the interior, because uh, while he is a pretty, you know, Good sized guy, he probably a little bit too tiny for the interior, but uh, weight wise at least. So, I think his role would likely be more as an outside linebacker, stand up linebacker like that. But um, it wouldn't shock me if if Todd Bowles comes up with a, a couple of you know schemes and packages that allow him to sort of display his versatility there, and that's what I'm sure what the Buccaneers really liked about. Now, I, I had an interesting thought, and I talked with you about this we, whenever we were on the live stream. I mean, you spoke about this, but I want to bring it up here in this video because I just mentioned obviously playing the edge, obviously playing defensive end. Those are the first two came, things that come to mind, right? But it's 6'3", 263. I could, it, knowing Todd Bowles, and the man is a very exotic blitzer in a lot of situations yes. i feel like is a great way to describe him he sends pressure from a lot of different situations a cornerback blitz a safety blitz inside linebacker blitzes with levant or levante david and devin white obviously could you see situations where the bucks get really crazy with it and they put yaya diaby maybe blitzing from inside the middle of that defense and just send him out there in the middle of the defense with some really weird type of alignment with, you know, Kalaja Kansi out there, Vita Vea, maybe Logan mm -hmm. Hall's out there, maybe Greg Gaines is out there, maybe Devin White's getting sent in out there as well. Like, could you see him getting moved around maybe at inside linebacker a little bit, or do you think that he's going to be staying primarily on the outside edge? I, w I would think he'd stay primarily on the outside Um but who knows? This, like you said, Todd Bowles can come up with some pretty exotic blitz looks. So uh, I wouldn't put it past him to come up with something in the package sort of like that. But I think for the most part, even when they're blitzing, I think they're going to want him sort of on that edge. Because quite frankly, you know, they need more from their edge rushers. Like they need Joe Tronshawinka to take another step. They need Shaq Barrett to be able to bounce back from the injury. The issue is they don't know right now, like April 28th, they don't know if either of those things are going to happen. So um, that's why I, I think, you know, they, they like the obby. I think that's why they brought back Anthony Nelson. So I think that's one of the reasons they really wanted an edge and they found the guy they liked. Yeah, and, and whenever you look at that immediate impact, right, you talked about the pass rush improving, and it does need to improve. You know, Todd Bowles said it himself. He does not want Vita Vea to lead the team in sacks next year. I think that that would be really the top thing on everybody's minds, but even going deeper than that, number two was Devin White, your inside linebacker. And I understand injuries play a part in that, right? But you're going to need more from your pass rushers, and the Bucks have certainly been adding at the pass rush. You added Kalaja Kansi. We've talked about that pick. You've now added Yaya Diaby. Now we're talking about that pick. The, the Bucks are really investing a lot 
in their defenders right now. Where do you see Yaya Diaby here right off the jump? Do you see him as a guy who's maybe getting in the starting rotation as a as an edge rusher? Do you see him more of a backup guy, kind of like a, a Anthony Nelson type guy? Where do you kind of see his immediate impact being? Yeah, I would I would think he were, he takes the Carl Nassib role um, of the defense. Now I know Carl Nassib's role was expanded because of Shaq Barrett's injury. Um, I know obviously after week eight, everybody had to play a little bit more. Anthony Nelson was basically a starter. Carl Nassib was like that third guy. But um, I think he's going to play sort of like the Carl Nassib role. I don't think the Bucks are going to rush him. Uh, obviously in an ideal world, he flashes immediately and you got yourself a really good player. But realistically speaking, I think that um, he's going to be used in you know, a lot of third down packages. I mean, he had nine and a half sacks last season for Louisville. Um, but I mean, he only had like one before that. <laughs> so he had really had a breakout year. So he's still a raw player. And um, I, I do think that there is going to be room for improvement and there's going to be some growing pains with him. So I don't think the Bucks want to overexpose him too much. So right now, I would say he's probably going to be the, the fourth outside linebacker on that depth chart. Folks, let us know your thoughts and opinions on Yaya Diaby and what you think his impact's going to be and also where you think you could see him excelling in this Buccaneers defense. Maybe it is obviously at edge rusher and defensive end getting his hand in the dirt, but maybe it's also blitzing from the inside is a potential some crazy inside linebacker type position where you get some really weird exotic blitzing from Todd Bowles. That would not be surprising. Let us know your thoughts and opinions on that. Go check out Evan's main work over at BucksNation.com and that side project that he does over at the Cannon Fire podcast. It would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Evan, thank you so much for being on. It is greatly appreciated as well. Folks, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope y'all enjoyed. And as always, folks, we'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now and go Bucks.